Hello, my YouTube friend, Pop Comics here. And in today's video, we're going to go through this collection of comic books I put together around 20 years ago. As you've seen in the last few of my videos, I've been buying a lot of Gru comic books lately. I think they're very ripe. They explode in value. I absolutely love Gru. He's one of my all-time favorite comic characters. In 93, 94, around there, I sold my comic book collection off because I was so annoyed by all the foil covers, the prices tripling, all the gimmicks. I felt like the quality of the artwork was going down. I felt like the quality of the writing was going down. So I lost interest in comic books. So I sold my collection, but I really regretted selling my Gru comic books. So one of the first comic books I started collecting again, when I started collecting comic books again at the end of the 1990s, was Gru. I wanted to put a whole set together. So I started collecting Gru. I tried to find anything that Sergio Aragonis had drawn. And what's fun about that is that I was collecting for the love of the character and the artwork and the artist and not so much speculating over value. I was just collecting because I love the comic books and it didn't matter if it was a dollar comic book or a $5,000 comic book. I just wanted the Gru comic books. So let's go through this box of comic books. All right, so I found this box. I thought this was part of my Gru collection because I'm trying to find all my Gru comics so I can get them sorted since I bought so much recently. And But when I opened it up, I realized it's all my non-Gru Sergio Aragona stuff. And it's a lot of stuff that I never bagged and boarded. So I wanted to bag and board them, but I thought it would be fun to go through this before I did that. I think you guys would enjoy this. All right, so let's start digging through this box. Let's start right off the bat with this really, really cool book, which I actually put an extra set of 3D glasses in so I can look at it. It does have the 3D glasses in it. So we have Aragonis 3D. Beautiful, beautiful book. I think the glasses are on the back or middle. Oh, I love that panel right there with all those faces. Yeah, the glasses. No, that's the side of the glasses. And that's the front, so it's complete. But the coolest thing about this book, the thing that I really think is amazing, is that it's signed by Sergio and he signed it in 3D. So it's red and blue. And then he drew a self-portrait where he's wearing the 3D glasses with the two markers. Oh, that is so cool. I love that. I forgot I had that. When I just saw this, I was like, wow, <laughs> amazing. Okay, let's see. We got a... Uh, Sergio Aragonis Boogeyman number three. I bought it for a dollar at a junk store. Back, all this stuff I bought like 20 years ago. So this was probably like 2003, 2004. I got that. Uh, all right, I got this Louder Than Words book that he did, which is a whole bunch of funny gags, you know, wordless cartoons that are funny. But the coolest thing about this one is he signed it on the inside with the dog jump roping. So I love that. I used to look for autographed books that he did because you could probably get them for about $10 back then. So I think I have about 10 in my collection. I have them somewhere. I'm not 100% sure where I put them all. Uh, okay, we have more of this boogeyman. These I did put in really nice archival backer boards. I don't know why I didn't put the rest in. I know I put a bunch of comic books back then in these nice boards, but... Uh, and I don't, these kind, I think were 100% acid free, so they don't yellow like the cheaper ones do. So we have Boogeyman number two, and most of these I probably picked up for like a dollar out of a dollar bin. Number one, Mighty Magnor number six. So there's some cool ones that he did the covers on. Uh, we have Detective 600. Absolutely love this issue because he did the Batman pin up in the back. Every time I see this in a dollar bin, I pick it up and I kind of hoard them. Just because I think that illustration is so much fun. So I probably have a few of those in here. Okay, and then I have a bunch of this Ultraverse stuff in here. Which uh, I got to flip it over. And then I think there's a one-page Mighty Magnar. Yeah. So he did a one-page comic book in a bunch of these. These, whenever I see them, I kind of pick them up. Just knowing that he did one page on a lot of them. Just promoting his comic book. Uh, Mighty Magnar number five again a doll. There used to be a cool junk store in the neighborhood that had a cool comic book section. Uh, it was a son and mom that ran it. The mom still runs another junk store in the neighborhood, but she's terrible. Don't go to that junk store. But the son was really friendly, and he would call me up when there was new comic books, and I would pull out indie stuff like this. I mean, I bought this because I love the artist, but I'd pick out other indie stuff because I wasn't really into superhero stuff back then. I was still kind of burnt out and over it from the you know early 90s when everything was just overproduced. So we have number three. Yeah, so it looks like I bought two. I probably bought both of these for like a dollar. 
you know, total. So 50 cents an issue for those two. And number two, all these I'm going to bag and board because I just, I want to clean up the collection a little bit. And then, oh, let's look at that one. Love that cover. And then we have Space Circus number three. Uh, I probably bought that at a local comic shop for three twenty-five. dollars I think one year on my birthday in like the late 90s, or early 2000s, my wife and I went to a whole bunch of different comic shops in the city. I was trying to find all the Gru issues and the other issues that he did to fill in my collection. Okay, this one's super cool. So we have the Death of Gru. This one is beat up. The spine is beat up. I think there's water stains. It's dirty right there. Yeah, it's a little bit dirty right there. Uh, but... I bought it for $5.95 from the local bookstore that would sell comic books in 1987. This is one of the few comic books left from my original collection. And I love Gru. When I sold my collection, my Gru run was kind of one I was kind of like, I kind of wish I didn't sell it. But I did have this one left. So this represents my childhood collection and I absolutely love this one. I don't care that it's beat up. This one's just special to me. Okay, we have... Sergio Aragonis Massacres Marvel. I absolutely love this one. I think these ones are going. He did a few. He did like a DC one and a Star Wars one. I think these have some value. But I just love seeing him draw all the Marvel characters and other characters from pop culture. With the little self-portrait on there. I mean, that Silver Surfer and the Galactus is super funny. All, all those characters. Fun. Oh, there's uh, Mark with Sergio right there. I love that. And it's still um, just here. He's at his drawing board. Uh, it's Namor. <laughs> so he probably has all the different Marvel characters in here. This kind of, If you like his artwork, this is a comic book that's worth picking up just to see his version of all these different Marvel characters. Oh, I love that one. Okay, and then we have Hollywood Superstars number one. Uh, I believe he did a one-page cartoon in each issue. If I remember correctly. All right, well, he he did the letter page. I see that. So he's got a little cartoon there. Show business. So I don't know if it's just a little story. So I don't know if he did a full page. He might just did the letter strip. Yeah, I think it might just been the... Yeah, that's it. So this is a Mark Evner written storyline. So he wrote it. And Sergio did the little cartoons at the back and the letter page for him. So we have number two. And this is the thing, back then I wanted to collect everything that he drew. So I was grabbing just every comic book I could find that he worked on. Some more fun cartoons. So that's, I kind of want to get back to that. I kind of want to start filling in the collection a little bit more with what I forgot or missed or didn't know about. So we have Hollywood Superstars number three. And... Oh, that's cool. We have a Mobius page. Mobius was another artist I was buying a ton of in the early 2000s. Yeah, there he is. That is awesome. And then Hollywood Superstars. And I still, anytime I see anything Mark Ebner writes, I grab it just in case Sergio worked on it. And just because I like that he's connected to the group. Uh, there, we just have some showgirls. Some of these kind of looks, just one little illustration, but I absolutely love it. All right, and then number five. Let's see. Yeah, we got one little cartoon on the back there that was fun then we have another ultraverse so this is a hard case number five again if you saw this you think it's a worthless comic book but i still look at them just because there's the one page mighty magner comic in each one which is cool that's what i want to collect everything that he worked on uh okay and this is really cool we have quack number two it's a indie comic book this one's actually in pretty decent shape for a 1970s indie comic book I really love this indie stuff. So this was like a two for one where it's a cool indie comic book that Sergio worked on with this other guy. So it's kind of, it's not quite his style. It's sort of his style, but not. But, you know, I guess it's just the way the person colored it. Or I don't know if he drew every panel or he drew some of it. I'm not 100% sure. This one has always kind of confused me a little bit because it doesn't look 100% like his style. And there's multiple artists in here. And I don't know if I ever found one page he did or anything. But I uh, just had to have it because he worked on it. Had to work on it. Okay, let's go to one more oddball thing. So this was really hard to find. It took me like a year to find it. It's a kid's poetry book, I guess. Or some kind of goofy kid's book. It's Mothers Are Funnier Than Children. 
and he just drew one page. There's one illustration I can find in the back here. And there might be a second one in here, but I couldn't find it. I know for sure he did one illustration. Like some of this stuff might have been him just because that's, this is older, this is from the 60s. So it's it he was still kind of finding his style, I think. Like uh, that might be his as well. It's not labeled that he drew it. Like a lot of these are labeled by the artist that worked on them. Like this one, you can definitely, you can see his signature 1963. So that's an old one. So that one he definitely drew. And I don't know if there's other ones, but I really want that. I was looking for any kind of oddball, you know, whatever he drew, I wanted it. I wanted something in my collection. If you guys are enjoying this video and you want to see me do more collection-based videos showing parts of my collection, I need this video to do really well. So please give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the description below what part of my collection you would like to see. Watch this video two times. Share this video and do whatever you can to get this video to be very popular on YouTube. Because if this video does well, then I'm going to do a lot more collection tour videos. The video bombs, I'm just not going to be motivated to do them. All right, let's get back to the pile. Okay, we have a uh, Mad Sergio Aragonis on Parade. This is uh, just a really fun collection. I don't know if it's like a whole bunch of his marginals and cartoons collected together. But I love these. I love the Mads. I'm actually working on a full set of Mad Magazine just because he's in every issue, basically. So, but this is a collected book. It's really fun to have. I really love it. I love whenever he does a self-portrait. Okay, we have... Wild Animals number one. That's actually a really fun cover. I actually might go back and try to get the rest of the series just because it looks fun. And but I think there's a yeah, there's a three page Gru story. No, it's not a Gru story, just uh, about a gorilla. That is super neat. And there might be oh, there's an ad for a Dave Stevens Rocketeer. That's kind of neat. Oh, who did this? a couple different artists and oh yeah and there is an ad for Gru as well so that is cool i love stuff like that that is so much fun we got some more bag stuff that i gotta put new bags on because these look like they're starting to get aged we have comic reader number 210 beautiful beautiful Gru cover early Gru 1982 a uh, comic reader number 133 1976 so pre-Gru just a old school sergio aragonis artwork which is fun. It's like, I don't know, monsters, devils. That might be him there. And a witch. That is really neat. This is the kind of stuff that I was really excited to find when I was hunting it back in the day. Just because it's kind of obscure. Uh, we have some more of the cheap stuff that I bought from the junk store. So we have Boogeyman number four. Uh, this one I think is selling for a lot of money these days. So we have the Sergio Argonne Stomp Star Wars. Always thought that cover was super funny. The ATAT is about to stomp on him. So happy I have that. I'm so happy I have it because I would want it. And if I didn't have it, it would be uh, you know super expensive. This is in this box. This is not a uh, Sergio thing that he worked on, but it's the original reprints from the mid '70s that they would stick inside the Mad magazines, and they're absolutely gorgeous inside. I need to get more of these. And I kind of want them just really cheap, beat up, ripped out of the magazines just so you can read it as a comic book. But the artwork in these is amazing. This is just, this is what I enjoy. This is why it's something like this, low grade, you can open up and enjoy it. And you're not worrying about it, you know, losing value by playing with it and reading and looking at it. And now you can really enjoy this gorgeous artwork. That's amazing. You see though, this board is yellow. I got to rebag. I'm rebagging and boarding this whole box tonight. Time to upgrade. I don't do as often. I usually, a lot of this stuff I take years before I do it. Okay, so I got a whole stack here. We have Aliens Havoc number one. This had a whole bunch of different artists that did Aliens pages. I think each artist did like one or two pages throughout the story. Okay, uh, there's all kinds of really cool artists in here. I'm looking for the Sergio page though. All right, I can't find, maybe he didn't work on this one. I know one of these he worked on. His name's not on the cover, but his name's on the cover of this one. So I must have just kept the set together. But this one, you know, has Michael Howard, Sergio Argonis, Mobius. I had a whole bunch of artists that I really liked back in the day. I mean, I still love them today. 
But back in the day, that was the main focus of my collecting. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I just love when I, you know, get something different than just Gru. I love Gru, but see him draw the aliens and stuff. That is fantastic. And I love the idea that different artists did each page. Such a fun comic book. I love that. Okay, we have High Roads number three. I have no idea, but I'm assuming he did a page in here. Oh, he did this really fun Lala Pagooza. It's, I guess, a beer ad, maybe, or. It's some kind of mad Sobe mashup. I have no idea. I bought it just for that ad. Love it though. That's fantastic. Okay, we have the Oni double feature number 12. Again, this hat, you know, Sergio's in here. Mike Allen's in here. Did the cover. I think that's him. Oh, yeah. I think he just did the interior right there. But still really happy to have it. Okay, we have Scatterbrain number four. Love the sci fi cover. They're watching TV out in space. This is just fantastic. You know, his stuff is just really fun to read. It's it's kind of silly, kind of goofy, kind of awesome. Definitely worth picking up. Uh, let's see. The Sergio Aragonas Dia de los Muertos Day of the Dead issue. That is awesome. It's super funny, too. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, and then we have Terrific Tales number five. He must have done a... Yeah, that's Arthur Adams, which is cool. He must have did a splash page or one page in here, or a pinup, uh, or a whole storyline. Oh yeah, he did a whole storyline in here. Oh yeah, this is cool. <laughs> that's a lot more in there than I thought. Usually a lot of these things have one page. He did a whole freaking story. Love this one. We have the Amazing Heroes preview number four. It's a Rue and Service cover. That is really cool. I love that one. Okay, and then we have, was it Guff? I think it was a one shot. Or I don't know why they're running away from the kid, but obviously he did something. That is really cool. And uh, let's see if I can. Oh, there's some Dave Cooper artwork. I love Dave Cooper. That is actually really neat. I'm sure Sergio's in here somewhere. Where is he? Oh, yeah, there he is. So he had like a three or four page spread. Okay, that is super fun. Love that. All right, Star Slayer number five. I think there's two or three issues in a row that he had a two or three page Gru story in the back. So this is an ad for the upcoming series. And then there's an actual two or three page story in the back. This one's tanned a bit. I might have to track another issue down that's not as tanned. Wow, that drawing is awesome. The big monster. Great stuff. That is fantastic. Okay, and then we have the Hero 1994 yearbook. I know Sergio has done a lot of different like um, convention magazines and stuff. I have to track those down. That's the kind of stuff that I just didn't buy enough of or couldn't find too easily back in the day. I'm not sure if he did anything inside, but I know he did the cover, fantastic cover. I love that it's like the image logo and it's like falling apart during a big fray. And then we have the Dark Horse Maverick 2001. Um, Yusugi Ujimbo cover, I love that. So we have some Stan Sakai stuff inside. And Stan Sakai, I think he did most of the inks on Gru, so I, I sort of collected him for years. And now, like, I want to collect more. I have a ton of it, though. That's the thing is, I would just grab it because he's related to the group. I was grabbing anything related to the group back in the day. So, oh, I love. It. I always love his self-portraits. I just love when he draws, like, the studio with all the little stuff in the studio. He's got, like, a little glue doll there. That brings me so much joy when he does that. Yeah, and this is a good, like, five, six, eight-page story. So that's fine. Very neat. Okay, we have... Sergio Aragonis destroys DC, so another fun pop culture. This time DC instead of Marvel and uh, Star Wars. And these are gorgeous. I love the illustrations in here of all the different DC characters. Batman just looks funny as heck. Wonder Woman looks funny. Legion of Superheroes. Yeah, that is really neat. Great comic book. 
Okay, we have a reprint of Plop number one. The reason why I love Plops is because Sergio Aragonis worked on all of them, or most of them. And there's the three guys from the fanzine here. So they must have been related to Plop when he drew this, right? Around the same time. You saw during last New York Comic Con, I got a bunch of Plops. So I was actually really happy with that because I don't know if I had all of them. But I got a huge chunk of them during the uh, during the New York Comic Con. Yeah, so this is a lot of fun. I like the reprint. The reprint's cool. Okay, we have another Ultraverse comic book. Again, it's just like a cheap quarter, 50 cent comic book. But there should be a Mighty Magner uh, right there. So he has all these one-page comic books in these issues. So these I always check when I'm, uh, you know, if I see them in like a 50 cent bin. I'm the kind of person I'll just double check in the back. It's usually right around the same page area. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, there we go. That is super cool. We have prototype number three. Okay, it should be around. The, yep, right there. That's why I'm pretty good at finding them because I've been looking for them for years. We have firearm number two. It's usually around the same area. Oh, there it is. That is fun. Love that. Okay, we got Vanguard Illustrated number one. I think this is just an early Gru ad. Yeah, just on the back, we have an early Gru ad. This one, I'm going to have to put in one of those clear boards just so that I can actually see the artwork. That is really neat. Love that. Then we have Escape to the Stars number four. Really, really, really indie looking book. And uh, I think he did a one page cartoon in it. Oh no, I think that's it. He just, on the back cover, he did like a little teeny thing. That's fun though. Yeah. Again, I was looking for anything and everything he did. Uh, this is super fun. It's the Madman picture exhibition where a bunch of artists did Madman. There's like pinups. So I should have a one page pinup in here somewhere. Plus there's a lot of other really great artists in here like Walter Simonson. Let me see if I can find this. Oh, there. <laughs> so Man Man's in his closet trying to figure out what to wear. That's too funny. Yeah, that's fantastic. This issue's worth it just for that one illustration. <laughs> okay, we have John Sable Freelance number 33. Did the cover art right here. Those characters down there. Mike Grell. That's fun. Uh, Star Slayer number four. Again, it should be... Well, there's an ad on the back, but I also think there's a multiple. Well, that ad's actually pretty awesome. But there should be like a two or three page cartoon inside as well. Uh, maybe not. Usually it's in the back. Let me see if there was. Oh, yeah. There we go. So we just have a two page splash. That's it. It's not even like a full story. It's just a two page splash. It's fantastic. There's a big dinosaur there. And I just at this time, this is before the this issue came out which I got right here. So they were doing a lot of promotion for it, trying to get people all hyped up. So that's really neat. Okay, and then we had the Sergio Aragona Solo with a samurai on the cover. This is just a fantastic whole bunch of different short stories. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. I really like this. I like these when he's just telling, it's just story. I don't know if this was his story, but it's more just like a autobiography kind of storyline if i remember correctly i know it's been a while since i read a lot of these but i always liked that i thought that was amazing then we have amazing heroes number 61 beautiful glue cover i think my friend sean actually just picked up a copy of this for me recently that's why i gotta sort this because i know i have a lot of duplicates i want to get the extras into my shop and figure out what i still need i do have a lot of the stuff he's worked on though uh okay we have another ultraverse we have the strangers number five Okay, let me flip it. Should be right when the art flips. There you go. One page storyline. So that's neat. Uh, and like I said, these, I just, I love the splash page. I've picked them up over the years. I think a lot of these I paid like a quarter a piece back in the day, back when I bought these. 
And back then, comic books really didn't have much value, so it was hard to sell that kind of stuff. Okay, we have a 64-page giant America's Best Comics with a whole bunch of short stories by all kinds of cool artists. And there should be something he worked on. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, so we have like a three or four page history tale. So that's a lot of fun. Love that. Oh, and this is fun. We have a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles meets the Conservation Corps. So just the comic itself is fun. I love this old school turtle stuff from the early 90s. 92. And uh, let's see if I can find... I don't know if you did a pin-up or a separate story. I forget. It's been a while since I looked at it. Again, a lot of the stuff I haven't even touched in like 20 years. But yeah, it's time to get this all bagged. I don't even know why I didn't bag and board it back in the day. So we have a Stan Sakai pin-up. That's actually kind of cool. There you go. Just a one-page pin-up. Beautiful page. I love that. Very cool. Oh, and then we have The Simpsons Comics number 100. Now, there's a whole, maybe like 10 or 15 issues he worked on. I need to figure out the rest. I probably have them already. But what I love about this one is he did a two-page Comic-Con spread. So you just see all these different people at Comic-Con doing different Comic-Con things. Absolutely love that. I kind of wish they colored it. But even in black and white, it's awesome. And, you know, I love Comic-Con. So seeing his version of Comic-Con drawn is fantastic. So yeah, I'm going to bag and board all this stuff. So I'm not going to show you every comic book I bag and board, but I'm just going to show you how I bag and board. So I take the board and I put it in the bag slightly, probably like an inch. So we're about an inch into the bag. Then I take the comic book and I just slide it in just there. This way, now I'm pressing on the board so I don't press on the comic and I just press it in. As you probably know how to do it, I'm just showing you how I do it just in case you never thought about it. But the last thing you want to do is crease up your spines while you put them in there. So yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and bag all these up and put them away and have them just clean and safe and taken care of. Okay, it was a lot of fun going through those comic books. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!